Greetings, fellow Earthlings. Uh, we're going to shoot a little video here on a flail mower. And it doesn't look like much of a flail mower, but it's in a box. So this is a Berta Franco flail mower. I guess they just go by Berta now. That you might have gotten from Earth Tools. This is the 26 inch model. There's also a 34 inch model. And soon one day there will be a 30 inch model. Um, but this is what it's going to look like when you open the box. Um, to get it out of the box, there's a couple ways to do it. You can invite your buddy over and, and lift it out of the box, which is the hard way to do it. You can slit the corners of the box with a razor blade, just right here in the corners, and fold the, the box down and then just roll it off, which is probably the easiest way to do it. Or if you'd like to save the box for some reason, uh, you, can, you can do this, this trick here. This is one I'm fond of. Maneuvering it off the pallet. Side, open the box up, catch the flail mower when it tries to fall out. Oh, actually, I've done this on the wrong side. Usually, I, uh, I do it with the flail mower on this side. Shucks. Well, bad idea. Have it oriented properly before you try this. But if it's on its side like that, you can just. Walk it out like that. Or down. Away. And now you've got a box that your kid can play, you know, make they can make a car or a boat out of it. Kids love this sort of thing. So packaged with it, you'll find the owner's manual, a DVD, uh, which just shows how awesome the thing is, but they don't really actually say much about the maintenance of it in the video. In fact, nothing. The owner's manual covers more of that, but we're going to cover a little more of that in this video too. Now what's wrapped up in the bubble wrap here is the removable baffle that goes in the bottom of the flail mower. Um, this, is, this is one of the features that makes the Berta flail mower unique among flail mowers for walk behind tractors. The removable baffle allows you, the operator, to choose whether the material is held in the shredding chamber longer or a shorter amount of time. That is, with the baffle installed in the flail mower, and we'll, I'll show you where it goes in here in a minute, uh, but with the baffle installed, the material is held in there longer, ground up finer, and comes out extremely small. With the baffle removed, the material has a larger discharge opening. It can come out quicker, so the brush or the uh, flail mower can easily double as a brush mower, so it's not pulling so much horsepower by having to grind up the material small. The baffles are shipped removed from the mower, as you can see, so you have to install it if you want it in there. So all the flail mowers are typically supplied with a quick coupling. This particular one is a Grillo style quick coupling uh, for a G107 or a G85 series machine. Uh, by special order you can get the flail mowers with a bolt-on hitch for some older tractors that didn't have quick couplers. Uh, we, we do supply them that way by, by special request, but typically all the new tractors are sold with quick couplers and this thing just has a quick coupler built right into it. The quick coupler locking pin drops into this hole and as you can see this hole is actually slightly ovalized, that is it's wider this way than it is this way. This allows the flail mower to actually float slightly, that is once the locking pin drops in the hole the flail mower can float slightly this way rotating on this round uh, axis here. So that allows the flail mower to float independently of the tractor axle. So if you're going along and your tractor wheel falls in a hole on one side, it doesn't cock the whole flail mower when it does that. That makes it have a much smoother cut and um, keeps the flail mower flat on the ground. So that's a very nice feature that the BCS flail mowers do not offer. Um, what is important though is that you keep this quick hitch greased. And more than any other implement, since this thing twists a little in that quick coupling receiver, it can work the grease out of there. Most of the other implements just have a round locking hole, so that it's just solid in there whenever, you're, whenever you have an implement on there. It's not rocking around. So with that slightly oscillating motion, it's going to work that grease out of there a little quicker. So anytime you remove the flail mower from the tractor, make sure this is greased up nice um, so that you don't get wear happening on the quick coupling. Uh, there is an oil hole here. This is a dipstick for the gearbox. This gearbox runs in and all the way over to the side to the drive pulleys. Um, 
Berta recommends changing the soil after a few hours for break-in. Most people don't bother doing that because it is just gear oil and it's sealed in there. But you do definitely want to check it once a year. Just take out this plug and there's, like I say, a little dipstick with a full mark on the bottom of it. It just takes 80 to 90 gear oil. Um, there are other lubrication points on the flail mower are grease fittings that are located uh, under the, the where you see the stickers. That is, there's a grease emblem on that side and one on this side. And what that's telling you is that when you remove these shrouds, which I'm not going to bother doing, uh, but you just pop these shrouds off, they're one, one bolt on each side that holds them on. And this is a once a year procedure. They, they grease it from the factory, so when you receive this thing, it's ready to go. But once a year after that, You'll pop these two side panels off and hit those grease zerks. Uh, it just takes a regular zerk type grease gun, which you can buy at any auto parts store if you don't have one already. And you just give it two or three pumps of multi-purpose grease. It doesn't have to be a lot of grease. There's a, there's a second grease fitting on this side too. You'll see there's, a, there's two, two shafts exposed on this side when you get this cover off. This is the, this is the pulley side. So there's, when you, once you get this off, there's a, two belts here and two pulleys connecting them. So there's a grease fitting on each bearing again, once a year for those two. Um, the owner's manual also walks through how to adjust the belts. Eventually the belts will stretch and need to be adjusted. It's a pretty straightforward procedure that requires just removing both side panels. Of course, you're gonna have those off for greasing anyway once a year. And what you do is what, that once a year when you're doing your greasing, just check the tension on your belts. If they feel a little loose, uh, basically you loosen up some bolts on the side of the frame, which allow the the entire gearbox assembly to be adjusted away from the body of the flail mower and that tensions up the belt by moving the two pulleys further apart there's there's these adjusters bolted into the sides that are now obscured by these covers but once you have them off you can see them they look like reverse turnbuckles they're basically big bolts that when you back them out it pushes the two halves of the frame apart to tighten everything up then once the tension is correct you tighten down the frame bolts to lock everything in place so that's, uh, like I say, once a year. A lot of people on flail mowers, quite frankly, forget that they even have belts because these belts are very durable. They're, they use, uh, a, as I mentioned, a double, belt, a double belt system that is a twin groove pulley. That has a lot of horsepower carrying capacity. A single V belt only has so much, but by doubling it like that, it's, uh, it's quite amazing the amount of power that can be handled by that. And, even on our demo flail mower here at Earth Tools, I think we've been running it for five years on the same belts. So, uh, and if those belts ever go bad, they can be sourced at a local hardware store or auto parts store. You don't have to come back to Earth Tools, even though we like to hear from you. So, there is an adjustment here on the front to adjust how far open this louver is on the front. The louver has these rubber flaps to keep material from flipping out as mowing is happening. And by removing the lower bolt on both sides, you'll see that there's a series of holes. You see, well, two and a half of them there. There are actually a few more holes drilled under here that you can't see right now, but that allows the cover to be pivoted on this pivot bolt to open up or close more, depending on the conditions you're using it in, the height of the material you're mowing. If you're mowing super tall stuff, you may want to open it up more to let that material in uh, because if, it's, if the material is too tall and the baffle is too low, it'll push it too far down to the ground before it actually gets under the mower. So you can adjust that up to accommodate the type of material you're in. If you're doing a lot of residential lawns or something with it, you probably want to lower it down all the way because, you know, the material coming into it is not that tall and by having those flaps closer to the ground, there's less of a chance of something flying out the front and, you know, breaking a window or something like this if you're around a house or whatever. But it's shipped, it's shipped in kind of a middle position, and that's where a lot of people leave it. It works very well there. Uh, there's also a frame adjustment, and the owner's manual covers this, and I won't be able to demonstrate this quite as well uh, in a short video here, but there's basically a way to adjust the input shaft angle in relation to the body of the frame. That is, this whole assembly, the gray assembly here, can adjust up or down slightly uh, in relation to the rest of it. What that's designed for is to accommodate tractors with different size wheels, because if you have taller wheels on your tractor, then your tractor PTO is higher. If you have shorter wheels, the PTO is lower. So Berta built that into the frame. They're the only flail mower company that bothered to do that. Nobody else does. Um, and that just gives you more of a complete range of cutting heights based on the tractor height, because if you, 
if, if you didn't have an adjustment there, and let's say you had a tractor with really tall wheels, what that would do is it would lean this up and it would lean the flail mower forward. And since the roller that carries the flail mower is in the back, right about here, by tilting this up, it lowers the blades closer to the ground. So it actually robs you of a little bit of cutting height. So the position that the 26 inch mowers are typically uh, sent in from the factory is the position for 20 inch tall tires. If you're, buying the, if you're buying this from us with a new tractor, we typically adjust it here to accommodate the size tire you're getting on your tractor. So you shouldn't have to make this adjustment. But if, if you're buying this separate from a tractor purchase, you might need to adjust it because we don't know what size wheels you've got. But even without adjustment, the, the cutting height range is pretty decent. A lot of people, quite frankly, never find that, that fine adjustment on the frame. I'm going to go ahead and stand this up on its side. I'm going to scratch it up here so I put the cardboard under it. So here's the roller I discussed. That's the roller that carries the flail mower and regulates the cutting height. Of course, that goes all the way across. So if you're working on a raised bed or, uh, or any kind of garden bed situation, it's distributing the weight all the way across the surface of the mower, so the compaction of this is virtually nil, uh, all this weight being distributed all along the space. Um, there are no bearings on these. These are sealed bearings it rolls on, or I should say no grease points. The sealed bearings that are in here are ball bearings that will last for years and years. You have rubber flaps in the back. This is where the material comes, is discharged out of the mower. And this is exactly where your discharge baffle is going to go up in there. Now, <clears throat> if you look at the top of the mower here, you'll see these nuts and studs across the top. That's where the discharge baffle is held on on the inside. That is, those are the nuts you would use to hold it on. You can see up in here, there's a strip of gray steel with these studs in it. The studs are welded into that gray strip. So those, the studs are what you see projecting through the top with the nuts on. So you don't have to deal with a bunch of individual nuts and bolts when you're fooling with getting this baffle in and out. It's just one solid strip with nuts on the top. So to, to mount this baffle, I would remove these four nuts or five nuts if it's a 34 inch model. This strip would drop out the bottom. I would put the strip through, that is line up the studs and slide it through here so that studs project out here. And I would slide that whole assembly up in there, slide the studs back through the holes, and put the nuts on the top. Your baffle is now installed. You reverse the process to get the baffle out. It takes a couple minutes. Now, as you can see, they've got this strip installed in here from the factory in the mower. And you would think, why did they bother doing that? Now when I want to install my baffle, I have to remove the strip first and put it on there. Why didn't they just leave that loose? Well, there's a method to the madness. And the method is this, or the, the reason is this. Uh, <clears throat> this is keeping this spot clean. That is, when you start mowing, there's going to be grass everywhere, and it's going to build up in every nook and cranny in this machine. If, this, if there's nothing here, if this strip is out, uh, that whole groove that that strip sits in is going to fill up with grass just solid. And when you go to put this in, you're going to have to find a putty knife or a jack knife or something and scrape all the goo out of there so that you've got a nice flat firm surface to bolt it up against because if you bolt it down against a bunch of grass it's not going to stay tight very much because that grass is going to compress. So they're actually doing you a favor here because now when the stuff builds up on the bottom of the strip and you take the nuts off and pop the strip out of there, guess what? It's all perfectly clean under there. You just slip, slip right up in there and put it back together. And if you take the few seconds, uh, you know, when the baffle is removed, if you take the few seconds to go ahead and mount that strip back in there, you'll have a clean spot to mount it the next time you do need to mount the baffle. So that's the idea there. Um, as you can see, the blades, lots of blades, they're staggered all over the thing so they give a very smooth cut. Uh, we've tested this model against the BCS flail mowers and we find that the blades are staggered much better on this machine and it gives a much smoother cut. That is, it, it just doesn't leave as much, it doesn't miss as much material. Uh, it's quite amazing how, much, how, much, how well the birdas do, but they've spent a lot of money perfecting this thing. Um, and you can see the blades are reversible. They're sharpened on both sides, which is standard for all flail mower blades. When they're completely dull on one side, you just flip them over and run on the other side. You can sharpen the blades, but there's so many blades, it's very labor intensive to sharpen. And a lot of people just don't bother. You just completely blunt off one side until it's worn back to about here. And then you flip it over and just ruin the other side. And 
usually that gets you three or four years of cutting all told and then you just replace the blades. They're about uh, $2.50 or $3 a piece for the Berta, so they're not terribly expensive. And let's see, height adjustment. So when you're, when you're using the standard roller system on this thing, adjusting the height is not super fast, but it's not exactly an act of Congress either. So what you do is just take a 17 millimeter ratchet, which of course you'll just happen to have in your pocket like I do. Drop this out loosen up this pivot bolt a little and then of course you would do this on both sides and you, you can actually turn the flail more completely upside down for this operation so that you can actually get to both bolts but then you just move it to the next set of holes and put the bolts back in they're carriage bolts so they lock into these square cutouts and you don't need two wrenches you just need one and what you'll find is that there's there's actually five holes here that is there's three three square holes here one two three and there's two more kind of hidden under here you can see the edge of one there and you can't quite see the edge but it's right here so those line up with this hole so you can and and well and then there's two holes over here so this gives you two pivot points so essentially at the top hole here you can get these three holes and then by dropping to this one you can get the other two holes so you know depending on what you need to do and how low you want to mow the way they've got it from the factory in this upper hole here and in kind of the middle, it's mowing pretty close to the ground, probably an inch, inch and a quarter off the ground, inch and a half, depends on the tire size of the tractor a little bit. Um, but that's pretty good for most cover crops. If you're going to go out and mow in the field with it, you may want to go ahead and drop this down and crank this all the way down and get some more height off the ground so you're not hitting rocks all the time. And of course, just make sure you set it at the same position on both sides. Well, actually, you can see all the, the full range of holes in the back there. Uh, so, yeah, adjusting that is pretty straightforward. There is a set of caster wheels that's available as an option. They bolt to the top using down, using these holes here. The couple bolts hold the caster wheel frames on, and the caster wheels sit just forward of the of the mower. Caster wheels pivot left to right very easily, and if you're doing a lot of lawn mowing with it, the caster wheels are nice. But the disadvantage of the caster wheel is it sticks out eight or ten inches in front of the mower, and if you're in the brush and so forth, they just catch on things. Also, the caster wheels are terrible on a raised bed situation because when you try to get close to the edge of the bed, the caster wheel just falls off the edge of the bed and it crumbles away the edge of the dirt. So you definitely don't want them for most market gardening situations. But they are available uh, for the few folks who find them uh, useful. So I think that pretty much covers it for the flail mower. Uh, you're always going to want to run this thing at maximum throttle. Uh, they are a high torque implement. They require quite a bit of horsepower to grind all that material up. So you select the appropriate gear. Usually if you're cutting cover crops, you're going to be in first gear most of the time, sometimes second gear. Um, if I going to grab a tractor here. This is a Grillo G107. I'll demonstrate getting this on the tractor. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn my handlebars around. It's always best to mount implements uh, with the handlebars in the rear PTO position. We cover that on our quick coupling video. Raise this quick coupling knob. As you can see, the angle of that is just totally wrong. But since I am on this end of the machine and not the other end of the machine, I can just reach down here and bring this up and align that thing. And I bring it in with a slight up and down wiggle. That's the patented quick hitch jiggle. Drop that down. Yep, drop down in the hole. And then you can, you can see, see that's the, that's the rotation I talked about in the beginning of the video there. That's the floating effect that lets the flail more uh, follow the contour of the ground. So now, of course, you don't want to mow like this. You would turn the handlebars back around and mow in the opposite direction. But this is how you want to mount or dismount the flail mower. Uh, getting it off, it's pr pretty much the same process in reverse. Now, of course, if you just try to push the tractor away from the flail mower, you find that that doesn't work too well because the flail mower has a roller on the bottom. It just rolls with the tractor unless you put a chock of wood or something under that roller, or just reach down here and kind of hold it back a little as I wiggle the handlebars up and down slightly to find that sweet spot in the, in the hitch. And there it is right there. So that's it. Enjoy your new mower.